many, many thanks, really. and thanks to the Institute for the opportunity uh, for producing uh, a, a report and for organising today's event. I've been given ten minutes to summarise the issues, so I'll try to do justice to it. Uh, for, for those who haven't had a chance to look at it, uh, fund fundamentally, the, the argument is a very simple argument, that, um, that there's a quiet revolution going on in this country, has been going on for some time. Uh, and the, the aim of it is simply to try to make good food more readily available and affordable, particularly in public places. There's something unique, I think, about public places, as I'll say uh, in a moment. And that, that's a sentiment, I argue, that is much more widespread, much more mainstream than, than, than simply the middle class food aficionados. Though, let me say, there's nothing wrong with middle class food aficionados. I'm not down on them at all. I'm just saying that this, this sentiment, this, this urge, this, 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 this absolute national passion, I think, it, it beats in people's breasts ordinary men and women in different parts of, the, uh, of our communities, whether it's, uh, whether it's parents worrying about the food served on a public plate in schools, whether it's families who are, who are shocked and sometimes horrified at the lack of wholesome food that is served to their families in hospitals, for example. Uh, there is this common sentiment, I argue, or, or, or urge to have good wholesome food that people can trust. So that's, that's fundamentally uh, the argument uh, of, of, of my paper. And, and, I, and, I, and I try to identify some of the key pioneers, uh, institutional pioneers of this sentiment. I've identified cities. Cities in the UK have pioneered good food, a part of the good food movement. And uh, uh, Tom Andrews is here today. Who, who, who chairs the Sustainable Food Cities Network, and Katie is here to speak on behalf of uh, currently our only uh, Sustainable Food City uh, supported city in, in, in Wales, which is, which, is, which is Cardiff, from Food Cardiff. She'll speak about that in a moment. So these cities, all in their different ways throughout the United Kingdom, are pioneering what they deem to be good food. And before I get asked the question, what on earth do you mean by good food? You know, we'd be here all day arguing about it. I've simply taken the plain and simple definition out of the Scottish government's new new strategy called Becoming a Good Food Nation. And in that strategy, which was published last year, they simply define good food as food which is tasty, which is nutritious, which is safe, and which is environmentally sustainable. Something unpretentious like that. We can, I think we can all sign up, whatever our niches in the food sector, whatever our particular passions, I think we can all sign up to that generic definition of what constitutes good food. And in addition to cities pioneering it, I think that Scotland has pioneered it uh, as well as any part of the nations and regions of, of the United Kingdom. I should say, of course, because Winford James is in the audience, that Wales has also done a lot of good work on this. But I, I, would, I would suggest, somewhat controversially maybe, that our penultimate food strategy was better than our current one. But we can talk about that later, because the current one is more industrial. The penultimate one, at least, try to engage with these issues of sustainability. So that's what I consider to be good food. That's how I think it links to these wider movements. And I think it's worth saying as well uh, that there is something special about food. Food has a unique status. It's very important that we at least uh, uh, debate this, even if we don't all agree on it. I think there's something unique about food. So when people say, as many neoliberals have said over the last 50 years, food is just another business, you know, they say, get it right, there's nothing special about food. There is something special about food. And that is, it's, yes, it's a business, but it's a business like no other. Why is that? Because we ingest its products. We don't ingest steel, software, automotives, even iPads. My children sometimes think their iPads are more important, their iPhones are more important than food. And that's because, as middle class children, they've never been hungry. 
That's very, very important, it seems to me. What is unique about food is that we ingest its products and it has, a, it has a vital link to play to human health and well-being. That is why countries around the world treat it exceptionally, whatever they say. The failure of world trade agreements in the Doha round, people wonder, why have they failed to agree? I'll tell you why they failed to agree. Fundamentally, because food is special. And developing countries want the right to produce their own food, and they don't simply want to be fed by exports from the United States. They don't want the right to be fed, they want the right to feed themselves because food is special, food is unique. So we can say that is the fundamental argument. Yes, it's a business, but it's like no other. There is a moral economy around food which doesn't apply to any other industry. Water is an exception. Food and water are unusual sectors. We can say the way the Scottish Government has framed its food policy is absolutely the right way to do it, it seems to me, to address multiple policy objectives. If you look at becoming a, a good food nation, Scottish Government is saying, we will do this for a whole series of reasons, to address the appalling levels of public health in Scotland, which we share in Wales, by the way, in terms of diet-related diseases. They want to do it to promote economic development, the well, uh, Scottish food producers, and they want to do it uh, to promote na cultural identity and national identity. All the right things, it seems to me. Here in Wales, bringing my argument to a close, here in Wales, it seems to me we have a, 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 a political duty and a moral obligation to, to raise our game on food. Why a political obligation? Well, because we were the first government in Europe to put sustainability into our constitution. If we're treating it seriously, we've got to follow through and, and deliver on that aspiration. It's no longer arguing for new aspirations, new policies. Policy is 10%, implementation is 90%. And that is the fundamental point. We've got to start walking the talk on food in Wales. And that is why uh, I'm arguing we've got a political obligation to do more, and we've got a moral duty to do more. Why? Because the greatest inequalities in our society are in terms of premature mortality and morbidity due to diet-related diseases. The really shocking thing, I argue in the report, the truly shocking thing about food in this country is that diet-related diseases, yeah, 50, 50 times more important through poor diets than through foodborne illness. Just think about that. Illnesses, illnesses from, quote, proper food are 50 times greater than illnesses due to foodborne disease. There's something wrong with, with our food industry. So we have a political obligation and a moral duty to do something. And I'm, try, I'm trying to suggest, as Lee rightly really forced me to try to operationalize some of these ideas. Academics hate to be specific, uh, but Lee uh, offered a lot of constructive criticism uh, during the, the writing of this report, and I come down to three proposals. Yeah, those of you who have not seen, seen the report, let me just quickly mention them, then I'll shut up. The first is to do something more about what I call the power of purchase. Governments around the world have many powers at their disposal, despite the, the myth that they've been, re they've been rendered powerless by austerity and globalization. Governments have a lot of power at their disposal, none more than the power of public purchase, using their procurement power to try to get not just value for money, but values for money. That's fundamental, it seems to me. So my first proposal is to, is to really boost the power of purchase in Wales by addressing the chronic skills deficit in the public sector with respect to procurement. <coughs> it's costed in the report. We can do it all. A, a, a dozen core procurement managers for less than half a million pounds. The second proposal is to try to, is to, try to promote uh, good food throughout the public sector uh, 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 in a way which is believable and credible. How do we do that? By getting proper quality marks, one that are recognized way beyond Wales. Food for life is that quality mark, uh, I've argued. <coughs> we should, as a minimum, as in Scotland, be putting Welsh government catering facilities all into the food quality mark. As, as, a, as, as a minimum, it seems to me, because that signals a determination to deliver and not just to aspire. Sadly, I was told after I wrote this report 
that far from us catching up with Scotland, we're going backwards. I'm tr I can't corroborate this, so I simply raise it in the public domain, as it were, that I'm told Welsh Government or the National Assembly, because there's two catering systems, they have dropped their quality mark application. So we are going backwards. If that's true, we're going backwards, not forwards. So we need to beef up on our political commitment. And then finally, I think the Food for Life programme can enhance the healthy school scheme in Wales by taking it up to another level, and a level which signals that we are serious about delivering quality standards. And I'll end on this simple point. Many of the cities that I've mentioned in this report, I've addressed many of these town halls over the last two or three years. A memorable one in Glasgow last year. But at the end of the conference, it was clear to me that people in that room realised that a community that a community that respects itself respects its food. And that's a fundamental issue. A community that respects itself will respect its food, the quality of food that flows in and out of that organism. And we do it for reasons to do with public health, ecological integrity, and social justice. And it's time we delivered on these things in Wales rather than just aspired. Thank you very much.